Hello everyone in this video, let us take a look at uh, various workflows that comes with uh, IT service desk template in uh, Jira service desk. In the previous video, we spent some time looking at uh, how to create a queue. In this video, let us uh, take a look at uh, various workflows in Jira Service Desk, of course. Now, when you're working with Jira Service Desk and uh, in case you're new to Jira, in case you are trying to evaluate Jira for the very first time and you think maybe you can uh, use Jira Service Desk, the good thing is, the good news is that uh, Jira Service Desk uh, comes with a template and based on the template, you will get some configurations and uh, you can start using Jira Service Desk from day one if you want and of course later on you can customize it you can modify it and uh, that is something re really good about Jira you can actually start using Jira from day one you don't really need to spend weeks or months just to configure it now when you are working with the uh, Jira service desk Jira service desk can uh, support your uh, standard ITSM processes and it, it comes with uh, some workflows that can support your uh, existing processes and you can always modify it further. So in this video, I just want to show you these uh, workflows and uh, these uh, workflows uh, will help you in understanding whether this IT service desk template is the right template for you or maybe it is uh, uh, totally uh, different from what you're looking for. But in my opinion, these, uh, uh, these, these workflows uh, are quite uh, standard when it comes to uh, using Jira service task for ITSM, ITIL based processes. So if you look at the first uh, workflow for incident management, and by the way, when you use IT service task template, it will have uh, some issue types. So right now we have issue types like change. If you look on the left hand side, we have incident problem service request service request with approval subtask and and task and each and every issue type or rather uh, most of them i believe uh, they have uh, their own uh, workflow now the first uh, workflow is uh, uh, incident management and incident management is something really common for most of uh, the service desk. Whenever you set up a service desk, it is uh, more or less for, uh, uh, for your customers to report uh, incidents. If something is not, is not working or maybe they need some help or they, may, they, need, they need to report something which is probably not really as per the expectations so they can raise uh, an incident so if you look at the workflow it has different states and it has a different transition so when you receive a new ticket it will always be in an open state and based on uh, uh, the, the 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 process based on what you want to do with it with it further you can move the ticket to work in progress by uh, clicking on the button called investigate or maybe you can move the ticket to maybe pending if you need more information and so on so this is your incident management workflow similarly you can also have problem so let us say if you receive a similar incident for uh, for one of your service or maybe one of your product let us say people are reporting that your that your printer is not working your uh, your specific machine is not working and uh, you may be able to respond to them by giving them a solution or a workaround, but uh, maybe there is a problem. Maybe there is a reason why these incidents are coming uh, every day. Maybe uh, there is something wrong with uh, your machine. So you need to basically do uh, some kind of a problem management. So you can raise a problem. And when you raise a problem, you can link your incident to your problems. And... Uh, the way to manage your problems, the process is something that you can define here in the workflow. And right now in the default workflow of uh, problem management, you have uh, these states like, uh, of course, open state, which is the first state. Then you can uh, review the problem. Then you can uh, either investigate and you can, of course, uh, 
complete or resolve the, uh, the the problem. And when you resolve a problem, maybe you also want to resolve your linked incident. So in Jira Service Desk, you have the option to link your tickets together. So your three or four incidents can be linked to a problem. Now, when you when you're working with a problem, you may want to. So when you realize that you are doing some uh, investigation, why there is a problem, uh, why there there are so many incidents, you may want to maybe uh, create a change request. So uh, your customers will raise uh, incidents, but problem is something that you may want to raise internally as an agent. And when you raise a problem and when you realize that after do doing your investigation that you need to uh, change something, you can also raise, raise a change request. So you can create uh, these uh, tickets that are linked together. So incident is linked to problem, problem is linked to change. And uh, a change could be, for example, if you're working on a printer, a change could be replacing a part or a change could be replacing memory or uh, a change could be uh, updating your database version to maybe apply uh, some patch or fix. So you can also raise, uh, raise a change request. And uh, when, you, when it comes to change request, when it comes to CRs, uh, you usually need uh, some, some approval from uh, maybe a cab or maybe your manager or maybe someone else. So usually in change management, there is a, there is a process, there is a way to get approvals. And uh, you can also see it in the workflow where you have, uh, let us say when you st when you start reviewing your uh, change management, you take one approval and you move it to planning stage and then you send it for uh, cab approval. And when you send it for cab approval, maybe one or multiple people can approve. And uh, once your approval is done, then you can start implementing your change. And that implementation could be as simple as uh, changing uh, a part in your printer, changing a toner, uh, maybe replacing hard disk or uh, updating your database version and so on. And uh, when it comes to changes, uh, the moment you resolve a change, maybe you want to let your uh, team who is handling problem know that uh, the change has been done and uh, this problem will not happen again. And uh, it means that people will be able to uh, use the service or the product uh, um, properly now. So the moment you resolve the change, you can resolve your problem, you can resolve your incident. And with the help of uh, some apps like Script Runner, you can also automate this process. So the next workflow is uh, uh, service request. So service request is again uh, a very common, uh, common process and uh, it is definitely uh, standard uh, in usually all the service desk uh, um, tools where maybe as a customer I can raise uh, an incident that something is not working but maybe I need help maybe I need a new keyboard maybe I need a new laptop maybe I need uh, uh, something which is uh, uh, which is probably working but I need maybe an, maybe an extension maybe I need some additional services so these service requests could be of wide ranges. I mean, the range could be really uh, wide. For example, uh, maybe if you are implementing Jira service task uh, internally in the company, uh, you may want to have a service request for onboarding. You may want to have service request for uh, assigning machine or hardware to your new employees. Maybe uh, you want to raise a service request for password reset. You want to raise a service request for uh, 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 requesting any hardware. And when it comes to service request in Jira service test, you can use a workflow with approval. Uh, so we, we, maybe you need a service request to get approved, or you can also do this uh, same service request without an approval. So you have two workflows with you. At the same time, when it comes to doing, let us say, normal task, there is also a default workflow where you can just uh, do things like, uh, you know, I mean, there is no process. It's more about uh, doing something and resolving it. And there is also a simple workflow. So these workflows are there for you to use if you want. And uh, these workflows are quite uh, standard if you know about how ITIL works, how ITSM, how ITSM based uh, tools work. And of course, uh, the best part about Jira is that you can always uh, change 
these uh, workflows uh, to match your exact uh, requirements or to support your processes. So this is all I wanted to share in this uh, video. In the future videos, uh, we will be of course uh, looking at uh, uh, how these uh, workflows can uh, be customized further. But especially in the next video, we will take a, we will take a look at request types. Now we talked about uh, these workflows and these workflows are linked to or mapped to or assigned to issue types in Jira. But on the portal, on the customer portal, you have request types. So customer will raise a request type, which is a map to an issue type. An issue type uh, can have a workflow. So in the next video, we will uh, probably create uh, a new request type uh, and we will display it on the portal. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video and you learned something new today. Thank you very much. Thank you.